What's up guys, Tommy Bowyer here from Move Rewind and today I'll be reviewing Casualty Series 29. There will be spoilers in this review, so without further ado, let's get into it. So the 29th series of Casualty began airing on the 30th of August 2014 and concluded after 46 episodes on the 23rd of August 2015. Series 29 is a fantastic series of Casualty, there is a lot to talk about so now that the details are out of the way, let's get on with the actual good stuff. So the themes of Series 29. Well, for me personally, Series 29 doesn't really start until Episode 5, Born Lucky, because that is the episode where there is a massive minibus crash involving several members of the casualty team, and paramedic Jeff Collier is blown up and killed instantly. And that is still to this day the best death casualty has ever done. It's a shocking death. Jeff one of my favourite characters, he was just about to propose to the woman of his dreams in Tamsin and then he is dead. And for a lot of the series from then on is seeing how the ED team struggle to cope with the death of such a charismatic and loved figure as Jeff. And I think Casualty did a really good job with Jeff's death because the aftermath shows how everyone from Connie Beecham to his wife Dixie just struggled to cope with the Jeff's death. So I think that his death was handled particularly well. A major aspect of this series is the rivalry between clinical lead Connie Beecham and clinical nurse manager Rita Freeman. I love these two together. I mean, it's a clash of personalities. They're both two very strong and independent women and they just want what is best for their teams. So it's great to see them two butt heads together. I always like a clash of personalities in Casualty and these two, it was just amazing. Now, one thing which does uh, make Series 29 stand out from previous series is they have three standalone episodes. Now, these standalone episodes are not connected to any of the other episodes, and they are very unique and creative. You can tell the Casualty team were just trying to flex their creative muscles and try something different. Did they pull it off? Well, it's a mixed bag. The first standalone episode involving uh, junior doctor Lily Chow trying to figure out why certain murders are happening and then find out it's the work of a serial killer was a pretty decent episode. The second episode is a very much like a what if episode invo involving Zoe Hannah showing how if an individual makes a different decision, a different outcome would be made. So that's quite an interesting episode. The third episode, which is called Holby Sin City, which has this very noir type atmosphere and it involves Ethan Hardy trying to crack down um, an apparent murder suicide and try and figure out what happened. It's an interesting episode, but for some reason, because it's standalone, it doesn't connect to anything in the series. It's kind of one of those ones I wouldn't mind missing it. There's no real reason for me to go back and watch it. So these standalone episodes, they were definitely something unique. I'm glad Casualty did them. But in the long term, yeah, they didn't really have the impact I think Casualty hoped they would. Now, obviously, Casualty is only as strong as its characters, and once again, Series 29 has some really good characters. For me, the standout character is paramedic Dixie. Jane Hazelgrove is an amazing actress. Um, she really is. Her grief over Jeff's death is... It, it brings a tear to your eye, even to this day. Um, Jeff and Dixie were the A-team, you know, for me they're the iconic dynamic duo of paramedics. So just having Dixie there instead of Dixie and Jeff, it just feels like something's missing. But I really like how they show Dixie's grief in the aftermath. Um, I specifically like the episode in which she scatters Jeff's ashes over the cliff face. I think that was a really good kind of conclusion to her grief and now she had the ability to move on. Now, um, as I said... Dixie and Jeff are iconic together. So when Jeff's gone, um, they pair Dixie up with Ian Dean, the returning paramedic. And I do like Dixie and Ian's uh, relationship. It's very much a mentor and mentee relationship, so I think it works quite well. To be honest, I would have loved to have seen Dixie uh, team up with Tamsin, who was, of course, uh, Jeff's girlfriend, who was going to be his fiance. Um, I feel like Tamsin could have been a regular character in Casualty. I can see traits of an excellent character there, and I think she could have worked well with Dixie, um, them two working through their grief together. But obviously, Tamsin couldn't stay 
um, at Holby Ambulance Service because there was too many memories of Jeff, which is fair enough. It shows how some people just can't cope when someone's gone and they just have to move on altogether. So um, it's unfortunate because I think Tamsin, as I said, could have been a great regular character. Um, some of the other established characters who have storylines, we have uh, Doctors Ethan and Cal. That sibling rivalry, which is was in Series 28, is still very much in Series 29. But they do develop, I have to say. Uh, there are some quite touching moments, especially when Cal's scammed by a girlfriend. There's some very touching moments where they kind of say, you know what, we might not always get on, but you're my brother and I love you. And I think that says a lot about how siblings are with one another. Plus... They give Charlie a lot to do. Now, Charlie, the only original character who's appeared continuously since the first episode, they actually give him something to do. He has a great storyline with his son, Louis, who's now addicted to heroin. And it's great to see how Charlie has to deal with that. And there's some fantastic scenes um, set in Amsterdam. They have an episode which is fully filmed in Amsterdam. And it's just, it's amazing. I wish Kelsey would do more uh, filming abroad because it just has this fresh feel which really makes the episode stand out in your mind. So I really enjoyed Charlie's storyline with Louis. It was nice to see Derek Thompson as an actor being given something really good to do. We also see plenty of new characters join the show. And of course, some returning characters. As I said, Ian Dean is a paramedic who returns. He's really great, but of course, the main one, consultant Dylan Keogh. It is amazing that William Beck chose to return to Casualty because Dylan is once again fantastic, effortlessly going through scene by scene, stealing the show with his sarcasm and wit, and he's just a great character, but his storyline in Series 29 is also very good because Dylan quickly develops OCD. And on a personal level, as someone who suffered with OCD himself, it's handled very, very well. I think they did a great job of showing how these little rituals, yes, to other people, they just seem like complete nonsense. But for Dylan, suffering from OCD, they're considered vital components um, in his day-to-day -day routine. And William Beck just... He does great with what he has to work with. So yeah, Dylan is a fantastic character and I'm glad that they brought him back. We also have some new characters. We have Honey Wright, who is the estranged, long lost daughter of receptionist Noel. Now, Honey is one of those characters I feel like they could have done a lot more with. She kind of shows up, gives Noel a storyline, which is great to see because Noel kind of became a background character at this point, And then she just goes. And then she comes back near the end of the series and they don't really do a lot with her, apart from pairing her up with Ethan. So I feel like Honey, they could have done a lot more with Honey. Uh, one character, new character at least, who I think was really good, is Nurse Jacob Masters. Now, watching Series 29, I quickly noticed Jacob has been the same character for the past eight years. Um, he hasn't changed. He's always been very charismatic. I think that's because uh, the actor Charles Venn has just a natural charisma. But I do like Jacob Masters. It's good we have like an alpha male nurse. I don't think we've seen one of them in Casualty before. So yeah, Jacob Masters is a great addition to the Casualty team in Series 29. As for departures in Series 29, I would say that they're a mixed bag. Obviously, Jeff's death is exceptional. And then we have consultant Martin Ash Ashford, who departs quite early in Series 29. And I always felt his departure was a bit of a letdown. Now, the survivor's guilt storyline they do with him, the fact that he survived and Jeff died and his struggles to deal with that is very, very good. But then he just kind of departs off screen. Um, they just kind of say, oh, yeah, his daughter was released from prison. He's decided to resign. And I just felt like that was a massive letdown. Obviously, Ash's departure allowed for Dylan to get a permanent job, which is great. But I just feel Ash, considering he's a character which has a long his history with Casualty, dating back to the 90s, I felt like they could have done more with his departure, to be honest. Made it a bit more memorable. But I do love Tess's departure. Tess, the mother of the nurses, let's face it, um, her departure was lovely. It's quite uh, down-to-earth. It's quite low-key. Her son... Um, who has uh, a baby now just says look I need your help so she decides to go and help him and she has quite a nice final scene with Charlie as they walk out of the ED so yeah Tess's departure it's really nice it's quite low-key but it works for a character like Tess who's always going to put her family first finally a big part of series 29 is the relationship between consultant Zoe Hanna and Porter Max Walker now throughout series 28 they had kind of a summer romance. It was a casual thing. There weren't really that much love there to begin with. It was more just like a sexual thing. However, by series 29, these two are actually very serious about one another and they decide to get engaged and get married by the series finale. Now, 
To be honest, I really enjoy Zoe and Max's relationship. The actors involved clearly have good chemistry and they bring that on screen. I like how it deals with the idea of the age gap. You know, a lot of shows I think are scared to reference age gaps between couples, but this one, it's quite an important issue because as Zoe says to Max, I am a lot older than you. There is stuff you might want to do, which I don't know if I can do anymore. So I think it was interesting that they dealt with the age gap. But obviously, Max loves Zoe to bits, so he doesn't care. He wants to marry her. And I have to say, the two-part finale for Series 29 is up there as one of the best. I mean, I like how it shows Zoe's nerves about settling down because obviously Zoe's never really been the settling down type. And then, of course, she sleeps with someone the night before her wedding. What were you playing at, Zoe? What the hell were you playing at? You could have been so happy with Max, and obviously she decides, in the end, I'm not gonna tell him because it doesn't really matter. Obviously, Max finds out because Zoe's told Dylan, and Dylan kind of hints that uh, something is going on. Oh, by the way, love the fact that Zoe asked Dylan to walk her down the aisle. Those two, their friendship is just, it's so great to see. The friendship is brilliant between Zoe and Dylan, so it's great she asked him to walk her down the aisle. Um, and then obviously the whole wedding descends into chaos. You can, you feel devastated for Max because Max just wanted to marry Zoe. She's the only woman for him. And then he finds out she slept with someone else the night before he was marrying her. So obviously Max is devastated. And then we get that fantastic fire at the wedding venue, which then leads to Dylan's boat being blown up. And that is how you do a cliffhanger, because you didn't have a clue who was alive, who would, was dead, and it was just a really well done cliffhanger. So series 29, I like what it does with Max and Zoe's relationship. Obviously, it all descends into chaos by the series finale, but it's high stakes drama, and that's exactly what you want to see. So in conclusion, Casualty tries to do something different with Series 29, especially with these standalone episodes, which while they're unique, I just don't think they worked for me on the whole. I've heard other people say they're really good and they really enjoy them, so I guess it's down to opinion, just like anything I talk about with Casualty, it's all based on opinion. For me, the best aspects of Series 29 are the characters, much like any other series of Casualty. I especially like how it explores grief with Jeff's death, showing how every single person in a workplace can be affected by an individual's death. I like the power struggles between Connie and Rita. That was a great part of the series. I also love the stuff they filmed in Amsterdam. I think that's something which Casualty should do more of because it just adds something different to the show, which is always something you're looking for. Um, I really adore Series 29. I think it's a decent series of Casualty. There is some great moments in here. It contains one of my favourite episodes in Born Lucky, which I would say is when the series really starts kicking off. So, Series 29, once again, a very enjoyable watch. So, thanks for watching, guys. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe in order to receive great and maybe even improved quality content in the future. Now, I've just started watching Series 30. My, my studies have started to... Uh, gear up a bit so obviously um i might not be watching casualty episodes as frequently as i used to but i will have series 30 out as soon as i can and of course i released a poll a couple of weeks ago now uh, asking if people wanted me to start doing classic holby city reviews because i've been watching classic holby city on uk tv play and I've really enjoyed it. Um, it's been great watching Holby City again. I really do miss the show. So I've decided, given um, every single person who voted in that poll said that they wanted it, I will be releasing Holby City Series 18 review very, very soon, within the next few weeks. So anyway, I hope you have a good day, and I will see you in another one. See ya!